Nation! Hello everybody, Zachman18 here. We are back with Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations. We are continuing on with case number four, which we just started yesterday. Turnabout Beginnings, uh, Mia Fey's first ever trial. The one that pretty much started her whole career and pretty much whole thing that inspired her career uh, as a part of an inspiration for Phoenix Wright to become a lawyer himself. So this is kind of where the whole story begins. So uh, we're heading right back into the middle of court. Um, so here we go. Terry Falls. Uh, let's see. And we've got uh, Dahlia, who uh, uh, is now saying she's Melissa Foster. Um, I'm not sure what what that's all about, but um, I don't know. We'll see. Mr. Fo oh, hey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're real good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime. Yeah. But there's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. And this guy. This guy's name is uh, Armando, and uh, he uh, he 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 looks a lot like Godot. He even acts like Godot too. He ha he drinks coffee as well. So I don't know if there's a connection between them or, uh, between it or not. So that, uh, obstacle. Yeah. Motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of your information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing! I didn't kill nobody! I never lie! Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. That day five years ago, I dream of it. Every day. This picture, it reminds me of everything. Bridge looks same, just like then, five years ago. Like it could fall apart. Fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ha, huh. sorry buddy, but you sound like the one that could have fall apart at any minute. It's true, I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped. My girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. <laughs> Your girlfriend, huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne, Valerie's little sister. What? Are you serious? And that's who Melissa Foster is. The girl, let her go. This is a recap from the beginning. Shut up, come closer, and I kill her. Sorry, but you're not going to get a chance. Bam. The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. At first I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but if it was to protect your little sister, I couldn't understand why she did it. Wrong! No protect, sister! Valerie betrayed me! Betray us! What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything! All lies! All make-believe! Kidnapping, too! Make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend, my love, my teen angel! Uh, did he actually say my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. <laughs> I do anything she says, anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says? Hold on a minute, what you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia and Valerie, too! Dahlia was in on it? Dahlia's family rich, jewelry business. We get one jewel, that's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We send to her dad. Ask for two million dollar diamond. Tell him make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer, cause she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, alright. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman! That woman, Valerie, she do it for real. She's shooting me for real. Me and Dahlia. I was shot in arm. Dahlia, she jumped in river. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. 
That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw, he threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister. I don't know what to do for her. This is in the Warring River, 40 feet below. These five years, all I wonder is why? 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 Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. She wanted to hear the truth from Valley herself. Yes, but I forget what she looked like. So I still want to wear a scarf. I don't want her to hurt. Just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear your answer come from my mouth. That's all. So that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, Zebra Boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Huh? Where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No, really, I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day on the bridge, Dahlia put it in backpack. Now gone with Dahlia, gone forever, into Eagle River. It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now, we're about ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her, my sweet Dahlia. I never found her. Swallowed by river, gone, Dahlia, my teen angel. Your teen angel, how old was she anyway? Just 14. 14? I guess you were robbing cradles before tons. <laughs> she plans she a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two mil- Man, oh man. Angels these days. Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel? Is she really a- It's time, kitten. It looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You've got to strike while the iron is hot. That's one of my rules. Remember it. Here we go. February 16th. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best. Hmm. You're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her client off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. That's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm. It's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figure that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence of a motive? Er, uh, yes, of course. I think... Ha. Uh, you're still acting as tame as a kitten, kitten. Mr. Armando, listen, a lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted and your knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Um, excuse me, may I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course, Ma Mr. Judge is ready any time you like. I'd like, I'd like to see you say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why I, uh, I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm, I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. Looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100-watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her, click, she cl lights right up. Very well, then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. Here we go. Melissa Foster's history. I I was out of the count. Yeah. <laughs> I was out of the country until it the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never been to Eagle Mountain before, and I certainly don't have any reason for hurting, wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who terrified against you, testified against you five years ago, or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think that Ben is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm, out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. So now I have to tie her to this case. Here we go. I guess we'll start pressing. As usual. So what country were you living in then? We were all living abroad, but after my parents were killed... It was a brutal civil war. She had to try to make her way back home alone. I lost everything. I didn't even have any personal identification. What kind of sob story is this? What do I do? Should I press her for details? 
Yeah. Witness, answer my question. I'll even repeat it for you. What country were you in? Your Honor, this line of questioning is childish. What country she was in, and how many languages she may speak are irrelevant here. What we're here to evaluate is whether this witness has any connection to this case. I've lived abroad ever since I was a little girl. That's why I could never have known Mr. Mr. Falls or Detective Hawthorne. Yes, I think we've established that point. Yes, indeed. Well then, shall we add what you've just stated to the official testimony? Yes, please, Mr. Judge. He's already mentioned that one. Oh, wait. So, we're going back to here. Okay. You didn't know what other person? Are you certain of that? Yes, I'm afraid I'm rather shy around people. Hmm. Oh, well, that can't be helped. Why is he just agreeing with everything that comes out of her mouth? The first time you saw either of them was when they were on the bridge, correct? Yes, it really was a coincidence. So what made you decide to go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just love being outdoors. Picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. You don't look like much of a hiker to me, but you do look like a digger of sorts. But Eagle Mountain is a two-hour drive from here, and no trains run through here. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went to there. I went there once with the college hiking club. I fell in love with its stark, desolate beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. Didn't know you were such a goth. By the way, what's the name of your college? The prosecution objects to any questions that involve the witness's private life. All that matters is that she is a material witness to a crime. The witness doesn't need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious in intent. Thank you. She's really gone too far. <clears throat> Miss Faye, you're trading on. Shutting up that ice here. I hardly said anything. Talk about sensitive. Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only have you contradicted yourself in here in court, you knew things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. Well, that's... Unfortunately, Miss Vane, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station and wants to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that at that time an officer showed her this photo. Hmm, that seems like a rather serious mistake. Ah, that's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. That's not fair. That would get in me. I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful. Your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client. He forgot what the de detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of an identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Fall's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Let's add it. Your Honor, what the witness said just now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to further prove that point. No, that's not why I... Enough. Witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. scarf. Wait a second. The scarf is blue, not white! OBJECTION! Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, you were talking about this scarf right here, eh? Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. White? This is the scarf you identify as belonging to the victim. 
but it certainly doesn't look white to me. Oh! Well, it was foggy that day and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but there's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is... Uh... <laughs> white scarf on it. Easy. Witness, have you ever seen this note? Note? I er, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Hmm, I wonder about that. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Falls' instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for identification. White scarf? Ah! Witness, you knew what this note said. There's no other possible reason for you to mistake the scarf's color. Uh, uh. Well, Miss Foster? No! Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Valley Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more person? That's right, a person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yep. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... Melissa Foster. Dahlia Hawthorne, gotta be. No one else. And that person is... Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There's her name right there. What's this? So what, who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne. Huh. Miss Faye must be desperately desperate. She's trying to bring the dead back to life. The dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago when she fell off a dusty bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, the her corpse was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster, I believe that's the same age you are. Ah! Even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying... But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Ah, nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a real hook <laughs> fire. Unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit-and-run arsonist. I understand. If I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now is my chance to make Mr. Edward squirm. Mm -hmm. Witness, just who are you anyway? I, I, I'm... I didn't think it'd come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, Witness. Yes, I understand. What? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Do you want to have an admission to make? I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You, you don't, you don't mean... Yes, the, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Ha, ah, it looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? But if he hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... 
the victim's younger sister, Miss Delia Hawthorne. But, but, I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well, but, well, as you can see... Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at another murder scene. Really, Miss Fang, your strategy is clearly obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you. Please let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. But even worse than that, five years later, Delia Hawthorne lost something much more precious, her big sister. This fame must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Logic, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would the witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see, I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Huh. I think you need a little push in the right direction, kid. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Who said that? Oh, she did. Ah, that wasn't me. It was this guy. <laughs> this crazy cop you dick. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Ha. Huh. What makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she, she's sweating bullets. Ah, I'm, I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No, you've just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? Huh. The rashness of youth, how charming. This is coming from someone younger than me. Now then, let's not waste any more time. Miss Faye, what motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? Okay, so it's none of these. Uh, let's look at the victim's note again. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. That could be something. No. 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 I, I, I think it's gotta be the victim's note. She was trying to get the truth out. The story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. Alright, let's save here. It says talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. The whole truth? The whole truth? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and, and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. A, ter a terrific story, Miss Faye. If you like fiction, that is. Enlighten the core, Miss Faye. What was this secret that was so important? What is your evidence? Dahlia and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh yes, I know this secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things, such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Ah. Uh. Very well. I'll grant your request for further testimony. I know it will be painful for you, but can enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf. Yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia. But this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. Here we go. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price... Ah. The ransom price was a raw diamond my, my sister Valerie brought to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind? I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start, and start a new life. Wait, sh I thought she was the one that went in, it went in the river. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And we're to believe after all that she murdered her sister. Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Faye? Yes, Your Honor. 
As you've heard, the witness is still tra traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. This Judgeworth got the jump on me again. Ha, huh. if we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up, we've still got that info. That ace up our scene. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't see you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right, it was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. I'd do anything she says, anything Dahlia says. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Planned by... Oh, sorry, that was Mia. Yeah, Mia, Dahlia, and Valerie, too. Yes, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. So I think we gotta pr pr uh, present that, uh, out that uh, outline of it. Showed me out the bridge from behind. No, because Dahlia was with him and Valerie was right there. She was she was the one that was behind the actual uh, the, she was she was the one that was behind the actual crack bridge. So that's a definite lie. Ob ah. Objection! You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. But it's true. I felt the push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said, that's hard to believe. I should have said, that's impossible. Impossible? I asked that the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge, now and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in these last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind as you have claimed, it would have been Valerie. Instead of being carried away by the river, you would have been smashed by the bedrock below. A most certain death. But she's still alive now. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Ah! Oh, terrible. Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. Ugh! Right. If the events occurred just as the witnesses testified, then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Uh, I, 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 er, you see, I... Just a moment, Your Honor. It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. If that's true, if that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Well, well Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, I do remember now. When I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. Order, order in the court. It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, you could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous! What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. Because of that, because of the actual photo, bridge unchanged for five years. Yeah, that's got to be it. Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. No! But let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Falls has been shot in the right arm. Ah! And more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point blank range. Ugh! So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That is clearly impossible. Ugh! Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? 
Indeed, what do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yeah. Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had her gun in handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. Perhaps, but still that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could have handled the swift current, but even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what was it? What was so important that she wanted to jump into the river? The witness is still alive, but this fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of the Eagle River. Oh, because this, this fell in Eagle River, so she wanted to go get it. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. Ah! No! It can't be! Yes, Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The two million dollars. She was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her take the kidnapping. Last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river, with the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Oh God! Why that's that's simply ridiculous! Order, order, order! Your Honor, five years ago, the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon, and there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's, sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that will weigh down heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the stories behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister, Dahlia. And then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth. As she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister Valerie Hawthorne. <laughs> Who is that laughing at a time like this? Oh. Forgive me. It's just hilarious. Witness, is that you? You amuse me, woman. Miss Mia Faye. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally, you have the evidence to back it up, don't you? Evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence that it, to at least show that... Hmm. Well, Miss Faye? I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye. Are you stupid or something? Oh, it's on. How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I am forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. Is this it? Is it really over? That girl has made a fool of me and there's nothing I can do about it. Huh. Without evidence, the trial is over. Who decided that? Mr. Armando! Come on now, kid. Haven't you figured it out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. Testimony? On the day in question, Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. Fall's stolen car and then went to meet with him. Disguise as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Yes, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who is the one person who can testify to that demon woman's crimes? There's no one else on here that's alive except Terry Falls that's involved with that. Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness? Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant? 
There's only one person that can shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne, or whether it was in fact her younger sister Dahlia disguises her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all, and that person is... Terry Falls. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what is your take on this? Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. They better not give us a one sec a one chance at this, because I already failed on the, la on, the on the last case because of that. Uh, good thing I saved, though. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? Uh, um, I don't believe it, no way! Dahlia died five years ago! Valley betrayed me! Mr. Falls, I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive, and you were used for two million dollars. That's not true! Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia, Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago she promised. She promised never, ever betray each other. Terry. Dahlia, it's true. You are alive. You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth, the real truth. I believed in you. I shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. But there is one thing that I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. Dahlia. I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Witness. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I apologize. Water, please, water. Hmm. Can't talk, need water. Huh. Oh well, I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bit bitterer than hell itself. He's totally Godot. There's no, I have no doubt that he's not Godot. Ah, I have no doubt that he is Godot, sorry. Alright. Who Terry Falls saw? That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of Bridge. She wasn't there. So, I waited on Bridge. I watched my car from Bridge. I never put no, yeah, I, never, I put no body in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked, then she left. That was, that was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. Wait a second, there was one person? Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. Do you think she would do the same for you? That's enough, Miss Fang. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Well then, Miss Fay, please proceed with your cross-examination. Is this how you want it to end, Mr. Falls? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence? There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten, I think. Alright, here we go. She put the shit. We already know that Dolly put it in. One woman came. One woman? Well, she took that picture. So she must have. She must have been there when when uh, when she was when she was there too. So both of the both 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 of them had to actually be there. So that's got to be it. Objection! So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge. You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well then, I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? Oh, uh, what? Whoa! Ah! Uh, uh. Oh, I would love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo. It's perfectly clear. It's totally, yeah. Obviously the person that came first would be at the one at the end of the bridge, right? 
And that's the victim at the end of the bridge. No, it's not. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls... Oh, wait, it is. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. You must have arrived at the bridge after she did. Uh, 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 uh. Um, Mr. Falls? Oh, yeah, because she, she was at the bridge first before she came. Please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. I got it now. I got, I got there around 4 o'clock. It's true. I, I had somewhere to go. A special, a special place. Did you go to the special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, it's an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't have portray each other. She brought a memento to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under the base of the tree there. It's a special memory for me. Hey, that's the same pendant with the poison in it. This is it. This is what I went to get. This little bottle and a necklace is your memento? It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your Honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at 4 o'clock, but he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. Ugh. With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. No! Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. Ugh. Huh? Mr. Falls? Whoa. Whoa. That's enough. Please. Witness? I promised her five years ago. If it ever happens that we can't trust each other no more, then we're supposed to drink bottle. Ugh. No, stop the trial. Your Honor, we need a recess. I was stupid, couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank this. No, we are so close, just a little more. I was going to prove your innocence. No, don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls, what? Mr. Ar Armando, thanks for the coffee. No way. Did he die? Or did he just faint? There's no way. And so my first trial ended suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. What? I ended up with a wound that cut so deep in my soul I thought I'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person, the true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne, she left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demon demonically sweet face. But that's okay, because we've already proven her guilty. We're going to save this since we've... I think we've come to the end of this very short episode. Unforgivable, that witch. Mr. Armando. You were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're going to make my coffee all salty. I knew it. I knew it wasn't cut, for, cut out for this. Mia. Ha! It is going on! Don't you, don't you get it? You can't cry yet. Oh! Oh! What? The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Mr. Armando. Oh, ho, ho. No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time. Then you file them away and eventually forget them. One year later in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. Bam! And that brings us back to the first case of the, of the third game. And that's how that all started. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. Angelic, sorry. 
It was finally all over. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. Wow, that was a short case. Jesus. Is that, uh, are we still going? Oh man, we have another case. This could be the last one, I'm not sure. We go from turnabout beginnings to bridge to the turnabout. Okay. So we beat the uh, the fourth case of Phoenix Wright 3. That was a crazy episode. I cannot believe Mr. Falls killed himself at the end. So there's old, uh, that's Ed's Ruth, what, uh, when he, uh, what he looked like back then. Got her in the trunk and uh, the bridge. So on Saturday, I, yeah, it's going to be Saturday. Saturday, we will be heading into the fifth case of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Let me know in the comments below if this is going to be the last case because uh, it's a pretty, uh, I, I think it's, I think it usually is five. The first had four plus the de plus the bo the doll the one that I, I just pay a dollar for, so there was five cases total in that one. Was there four? I think there was four in the last one. Could be five. I can't remember. So, uh, anyways, so could be the last case. Could be not. Let me know in the comments below if it is or not. So, if you guys haven't played it before. So, anyways, thanks guys for watching. Today's session for Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations on Saturday. We will pick this up again on episode 5. And I will see you guys in my next video coming soon. Objection!